I am Riley Smith, and I am excited to be a part of the Seen Through Horses campaign because horses have been a huge part of my life. I am Riley Smith's mother. Horses played such a, a tremendous role in Riley's life. Even at one point in his life, a horse truly healed him. Currently, I play Ryan Hudson on CW's Nancy Drew. You might also know me from some of my other roles like Nashville uh, on ABC. True Blood, True Detective on HBO. And he did a little movie in the very beginning of his career called Motocross, and it was hugely popular. I couldn't take him anywhere and the girls would chase him. <laughs> I have landed roles such as Deliverance Creek, the Nicholas Sparks movie of the week, and uh, Ghost Whisperer on CBS, all because of my, my equestrian background. What most people don't know about Riley is that he grew up on a horse ranch in Iowa, and he's a very accomplished, um, Equestrian. I did a movie uh, in uh, Africa with Wesley Snipes called Gallo Walker, where I got to ride horses through the Namibian desert, which was a beautiful experience. Riley's dad and I had a horse ranch in Marion, Iowa, and it was a breeding and show ranch, so we usually had about 75 to 100 horses on our ranch. Growing up on my family's quarter horse ranch was uh, such a unique, blessed experience. I had my own pony before I could walk. I then graduated to my own quarter horse by the time I was six. I was shown competitively by like eight and nine. Riley was very young when I put him on a horse for the first time I actually set him in front of his dad when he probably was six months old. My dad is, was, is a amazing horseman. He did it his whole life. He uh, dedicated his life to it. Very well renowned and respected uh, in the industry, not only for, for breeding and showing horses, but also for judging. My mom was always the, the one that taught me to get spiritual with them, which is uh, something that is unique. I think most people think, you know, ride fast, ride, you know, strong, ride tough, you get bucked off, you get back on. But there was a, there was a softer side to the business, to horses, that if you really tap into that, that could be more powerful than trying to overpower something. Riley was an accomplished rider by the age of nine. He had a very special horse named Famous Brick. That was his first show horse, and Famous was a very special animal. Um, he was born the same month as Riley. They kind of became one. They, you know, Famous lit up when Riley walked into the barn and got on his back and brushed him and gave him a bath. You know, they, they were a team. One of the first competitions I won was uh, the Small Fry Walk Trot with my horse, Famous Brick. It's the largest single breed horse show in the world. You can't even imagine the joy and pride we felt. Horses have had a profound impact on Riley's life. Um, we were faced with a very scary health situation and I 100% believe that his horse, Famous, healed him from this scary disease that he had. When I was 12, I uh, became paralyzed um, with a disease called Guillain-Barre, uh, and I lost um, pretty much all my motor skills. It's a virus that's very, very rare. It settled in his brain stem and attacked his central nervous system. He couldn't hold a spoon, his hands were a bit curled, his toes were a bit curled, mostly he had no sense of balance. The facial expression was much different. It was kind of a blank stare and um, he was very confused, couldn't articulate or speak clearly. The very first morning uh, that I realized I, I might have had something going on with my body is I woke up and I, I couldn't really sit up uh, out of bed. And then once I got myself sat up and I got to the kitchen table for breakfast, um, the strangest thing happened. I went to take a bite of my cereal and your brain we don't, we take for granted, we don't even think about it, but your brain tells your, your limbs to do things. Like right now, my brain's telling my hand to do this. Well, that morning I went to take a bite of cereal and just missed my face by a foot. And that was weird, because in my mind I told my, my hand to go to my mouth. And so my mom said, do that again. And I, I went and tried it again and I missed my mouth again. And immediately she said, we need to go to the doctor. The doctor sent him to the neurologist and they had ran test after test, MRIs, blood work. They ran him through multiple testing and it was determined that he had Guillain-Barre, which is a very, very rare disease. 
And then I, I don't, you know, then it all becomes like kind of gray to me. I remember laying in bed a lot, watching TV and sleeping. And then I do remember uh, learning to try to walk again. We had a long hallway in our in our house, and I would uh, I would use the hallway to kind of walk. And then when I get to the end of the hall, I would see how many steps I could take before I'd fall. Day one would be maybe one or two, and day three maybe four or five steps. But I remember having to crawl around my house for a good portion of of a year. You know, it was a tough time because I was also in eighth grade, and and so I lost a lot of weight, and then I had to use a walker when I finally could walk, and I couldn't go to school. So uh, that was a really that was a tough tough age to have all those things happen. After months of doctor visits and physical therapy and, you know, seeing some improvement, but not the improvement that we had hoped for, I wanted to get him back to being 100%. And that meant walking without a walker, having clear thoughts, having his speech back, having my Riley back. And I just felt deep in my heart and my soul that it was important to take him to the barn because he had a very special bond with his horse, Famous. I kn knew how important that was to him and it had been absent in his life for a few months because, you know, of his illness. My mom thought that the best medicine for me was horses. I think that my parents were definitely ahead of the curve with understanding the powers that horses have to heal. And it was quite possible he could have stayed that way for the rest of his life. And um, I wasn't gonna have that answer. So I uh, had a conversation with his dad and we made a decision that was a bit risky because he didn't have balance to take him to the barn and let him um, experience his horse famous. And the first time we um, set him bareback because we wanted him to feel that sense of his horse and the power of his horse and just to be comfortable with famous. So we set him bareback on famous and watched him very carefully around the arena. And it was, it was such a beautiful experience because we could see some happiness and a light in Riley's eye. And you know what, Famous knew the job that he was doing. He knew he was there to heal and to help Riley progress. It was a great idea to put me on a horse to try to relearn balance. And, and also to, again, to go back to the connection of, of an animal that big, um, what a cool, uh, idea to to try to get centered again with that um, when I myself was not centered at all. Famous knew. He took very calculated, careful steps and uh, I saw a big change, particularly in Riley's face, you know. So day after day, we would continue to put him on his horse and we continue to see progress. So when I got back on him when I was sick, I think he must have understood that I wasn't the same person. So, yeah, he took care of me. So Famous did a wonderful job of helping heal him physically and emotionally. And I would say within a month, Riley was walking without a walker, his speech had improved, and it was really incredible to see the energy and the passion and the uh, between he and Famous. It was wonderful. By the end of summer, Riley was 90% back to normal and got to begin his freshman year. The thing that I understand and remember about Famous was how gentle he was with me or with anybody around him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just appreciated that. He took care of me, right? You know, so that was it. So I think what I would say to him is, I appreciate you taking care of me. One of the reasons that I wanted to get involved with uh, with this program is is because um, I do believe in in the therapy that horses can give uh, people, and um, so I felt like this was the the right time to talk about to talk about it. That time in our, our, my life was a very scary moment, but I do want to say this. I knew there was a reason and a purpose that we were going through that. 
And I feel that um, today we're able to share our story. After I recovered uh, from GBS at 12, I just really went back into horses full, full time. Then by the time I was 16, I had uh, won the American Quarter Horse Youth World Championship and competed uh, you know, multiple times at that level. Riley became the vice president of the American Youth Quarter Horse Association. At 17, Riley ran for the presidency of the American Youth Quarter Horse Association and became president. He was the youngest president that had ever been nominated, so that was a big thrill. I got to, to travel all over the, the world to uh, represent the association, and I got to meet so many different people, and I got to talk about the love of horses and, and, and you know, what horses can do for us and promoting the horse industry, especially the uh, quarter horse industry, um, to to other lovers of horses. It opened up my eyes to the side of the industry where I got to promote what had given me so much. Horses have shaped who I am 100% all, all the way around in, in every facet. Uh, from learning uh, hard work, um, learning how to get back on when you fall off, uh, competitions within the horse circuit, learning that you can't always win. I've always said that every piece of the horse business and the horse world for me taught me about life. Um, I think I always tell kids that are interested in horses that not only is it good for you know, physical, uh, emotional um, connection with a horse, but just in life, like what it teaches you um, about the world. My daughter turns three in August. We take her pony riding and uh, Eventually, I'd like to get her her own pony. I want to show my daughter that, that horses uh, can teach her so many things about life. They can teach her responsibility. They can teach her uh, love. They can teach her that she can control things that seem bigger than herself. And that's, that's one of the most important things that I think you can learn from horses. I'm so happy to hear that horses are being used in a, a variety of ways for Therapy. I've always known in my heart that how special they are and how important role that they can play in, in someone's life. And I'm happy that we're getting to share our story today so that maybe we can touch just one person even and they can experience the bond that you can create with a, the, a horse. You want to go look at more? Yeah, Turn that one over there? Yeah, come on. Look. Whoa! I would, I would 100% um, suggest that people with any sort of uh, anxiety or, or physical or mental, emotional disorder or uh, ailment, anything you're going through, uh, to try turning to horses. It's, uh, it's such a cool, unique, uh, progressive uh, way to try to heal. I feel that horses need humans, but most importantly, I feel that humans need horses. It's amazing how they can um, give you peace, they can give you joy, they can calm your heart when you're having a bad day. You can go and just brush and talk to them and, and just feel their love. While you're on a horse and you have the time to reflect and, and, and just be one with uh, earth and with the animal, it puts a lot of things in perspective. You know, I think that uh, it kind of makes everything seem a lot smaller and a lot more simple. You don't have to show them, you don't have to be on their back, you don't have to ride them. Just go and experience what they can offer. That's, a, that's what's important. If, if you can get that connection and that feeling, that's, that's what, what it's all about. And if you let yourself go and be in their presence, you'll find that peace that you're looking for. The thing about horses that gives me peace personally is, is that connection I've had my entire life, that it is who I am. It's, it's my center of gravity, so to speak. Um, but I think that for anyone, if they weren't raised with horses, you could find that same kind of peace just by feeling the energy of a horse. There is something so powerful about the sheer size of a horse that can make you and all the problems that you're dealing with seem so small. Horses can touch your heart, touch your soul, they teach you patience, they teach you love, they give you peace, 
It's incredible the power of a horse if you just give them the opportunity. Horses have been my life, they've saved my life, they, uh, they will always be a part of my life. It means so much to me to be able to share my story with the Seen Through Horses campaign. I firmly believe that uh, horses have uh, changed my life and I do believe that they can change anyone's life who's seeking help. I'm excited to be a part of the Seen Through Horses campaign. It's a campaign dedicated to advocating for mental health programs and services incorporating horses to the many ways horses are being involved to help others around the world who are struggling. Please join us October 3rd through the 10th, 2022, to raise awareness and funds for a nonprofit organization who is changing lives through horses. And to learn more, please visit horsesformentalhealth.org.